everyone. Thank you all for being here with us this evening. This is our second um, midweek Lenten worship service for Created for Community. This week our theme is In Community with All the Saints. I certainly hope you've been having a good week and I'm uh, certainly hoping that you're feeling God's presence in your life every day. Thank you for being with us and um, let us begin our service. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation, and with all your creatures we give you glory, through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Creator, you fashioned us in your image in the midst of a world beyond our knowledge and understanding. Continue to weave us together in community with all created things, and deepen our awareness of the ways you connect us to the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture this week is from the ninth chapter of Mark. It's a familiar story. It is the story of the transfiguration. Jesus in conversation with those who have gone before him. And this event is witnessed, of course, by Peter and James and John. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. 
He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, tonight, we're talking about being in community with all the saints. Now, I know about you, and maybe I'm just strange. All right, I am strange. But when I first heard that, that line, community with all the saints, the first thing that came through my mind was the hymn, For All the Saints. For all the saints who from their labors rest. You know the song. We sing it on All Saints Sunday every year. That started running through my mind. It was like an earworm. I couldn't get it out of my head as I thought about, about this topic. And finally, um, my mind did wander somewhere else. Um, and it wandered to the book of Hebrews. And you're wondering, how did I get to Hebrews from the Transfiguration and for all the saints? And I got to thinking about that one little line in Hebrews, don't ask me where it is, I'm not that good, um, that says, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And that got my mind wandering off in another direction, because now I ended up with the hymn, Who is this host arrayed in white? That's in my head now. Who is this host arrayed in white? Goes on like that. It's a wonderful Scandinavian hymn. Um, when I was a child, we grew up in a Lutheran church, a um, Scandinavian Lutheran church, and the joke was, if you died and you didn't sing that hymn at your funeral, God wouldn't let you in. So it, it's, it's a beautiful hymn. It's very long. We hardly ever perform it. Um, but it's a beautiful hymn, and maybe someday we'll hear that from some of our wonderful musicians. Anyway, that hymn is based on a passage in Revelation, so now my mind went off to the book of Revelation and about how there's this, this host without number that are gathered around the throne of God and of the Lamb, and they're singing God's praises, and it's a wonderful, powerful, apocalyptic image. And then I realized something different. Because I realized, and we're, we're doing this on, on March 3rd, that six days from now, March 9th, is the 10th anniversary of my dad dying. And that finally got me back to the topic, thinking about my dad. How might we be in community with all the saints? I think that's a fair question, don't you? How can we do that? How are we in communion, in community, in relationship with all the saints. How are we still in community and in relationship with all those who have gone on before us, with those who, was, as, as some of the Celtic traditions say, those who are on their way. I love that image, they're on their way. But how do we, how do we stay in communion with, in community with them? How are we still in relationship with them? I, this was, when, when, when we thought about this, this, this Lenten series, and when, we, when I started looking at it, this is the tough one. How are we in community with the saints? Our scripture tonight is the story of the transfiguration. And in it, Jesus is literally in community with Moses and Elijah. As in, literally, they're actually talking to one another. Well, that's community, ain't it, folks? That's relationship. When I can stand there and talk to you, we're good. Now, the reason Jesus can do that, at least according to the the, um, I'm going to call them legends in Judaism, is that neither of these ancient heroes actually ever died. Neither Moses or Elijah actually ever died. Elijah's carried off in the, in the fiery chariot, you know, and Moses, yeah, maybe he dies, maybe God buries him in a secret place, but there's also a tradition that says Moses never died. He also just went off and was with God. So yeah, I mean, Jesus can talk to them in some kind of divine, transfigured, heavenly glory kind of way. But you know what? I was there. And I know for a fact that my dad died. The funeral was at my former church in Spinnerstown, Pennsylvania, and I gave a hooting good eulogy for my dad. And we were laughing and we were crying at the same time my dad was a real character and my dad did a lot of stuff in his 84 years like for example finishing second in an auto race at Daytona Beach when they still raced on the beach he, came, he entered a race and he comes in second 
And the reason he came in second, folks, is he's the only other car running at the end of the race. It was him and the guy who won. And the guy who won had lapped him like 20 times. But he was still running, so he came in second. Or how him and his buddies were driving up to Canada, and they drove around the Great Lakes, and somewhere along the way they flipped their car over, and they all got out, and were fine, and they flipped the car back over on the wheels and kept on going. Or how when he was a young man, and some of you from north, up north in Illinois, you'll get this, he used to run liquor into Evanston under the seat of his car because, you know, Evanston was dry for a super long time. And he used to run liquor into Evanston. Or I, how my dad talked his dad into letting him volunteer for World War II when he was only 17. And my dad, his, his dad, he, he signed the paperwork and my, my dad enlisted and only after all the paperwork was done and only after he was fully sworn into the army did he have the nerve to go tell his mom. He was not happy. I have lots of stories about my dad. At that funeral, we sang Life's Railway to Heaven. You know that one? Life is like a mountain railroad with an engineer that's brave. We must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Blessed Jesus, thou will guide us as we reach that blissful shore. Oh, it's a glorious hymn. It's his favorite old-time gospel song. We sang it at his funeral. So, folks, there's one thing I know. He's gone. And I ain't having any float-in-the-sky conversations with him anytime soon. So let's set Jesus and Moses and Elijah aside for tonight. Because that's not going to happen. Not for you and me anyway, not in this life. Let's think about my dad. And how, yeah, we are still in relationship. And we still do share community. Same thing with my mom, by the way, who's been gone for over 41 years. How? Well, first of all, because their influence is still working within me. What they taught me in so many ways is still at work within me. My mom taught me about church. My mom taught me how to go to church. She taught me how to pray. And she taught me about pasta and meatballs. And she taught me about the joy of a good chocolate cream pie that was made with bisquick and jello pudding and whipped cream. And there's nothing better ever in the world. She taught me about that. And she taught me how to care and love to the point that when she was dying of cancer, I took care of her like she had taken care of me when I was supposed to be dying from asthma as a little, little child with patience and love and sacrifice. She taught me all that. My dad taught me how to be responsible most of the time and how to shoot and how to respect people and how to respect creation. He taught me the value of honest, hard work. And he taught me how to roll up two-inch diameter Chicago Fire Department fire hose after we tested a sprinkler system in a factory in a field outside of Peoria one summer. And how, when I hit absolute rock bottom in 1986, he just put his arm around my shoulder, which is the closest that old Swede ever came to actually hugging me. And he just said quietly, we'll get through this. And then he let me move in with him and live in his senior citizen condo that he was subletting. Quiet, strong love I never forgot that I got to pay him back with when he needed to move in with Lynette and I after we got married, when he couldn't live alone no more. We took him in and he had 13 years with us. And he got to meet cats and he never knew and he got to have a granddaughter. Influence, impact, object lessons, quiet love, fun, struggle, they have all stayed with me. And then of course there's this other little thing that we ought to mention tonight about how the dead who die in the Lord aren't truly dead, are they? They will live again in God's eternal kingdom where we'll have such a community as you ain't never seen before, folks, and relationships that are perfect and eternal. You get where I'm going with this? Because I hope so. Because here's what I'd like you to do this week. A little homework assignment like I gave you last week. I hope you'll do this again this week. I want you to think about somebody. I want you to remember someone who really impacted you in a good way. Someone who truly influenced you. Help you become in a good way the person who you are now. Think about someone. Think about a couple of someones, however many you want. And take a piece of paper 
and write their names down. And write down how they helped you, what they taught you, how they loved you. Reflect on that. Remember that. And give thanks to God for them, for all that they taught you, and the whole way that they inspired you and shaped you. And remember them, and in remembering them, know that you'll be with them again. And you'll share community with them forever. And if you want, share something about them with me. Send me an email. I'd love to hear your stories. Heck, maybe I'll tell you a few more of mine, too. We're in community with all the saints because all the saints are still alive in Christ. Because while they are parted from us now, that parting is only temporary. Community exists and persists because death is not the end. Because death is not the last word. Our end is with God, and it is God who has the last word. And that word is always, eternally, the word of life. Community goes on because we are united in Christ forever. And in Christ, our community with all the saints goes on forever. Amen. Rejoice in God's saints today and all days. A world without saints forgets how to their faith in acquiring the habit of prayer, their depth of adoring, Lord, help us to share. Some march with events to turn them God's way, some need to withdraw. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of the creation, for abundant harvests that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, the government, and those who protect us. For those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, and for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in the time of affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all servants of the church, for this assembly, and for all people who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. I invite you at this time in the quiet of your home to lift up any special petitions you wish to bring to the Lord this evening.
Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Giving thanks for all who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you, through Christ our Lord, to you, O Lord. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Creator who fashions us together with all things, the Christ who leads us into a new beloved community, the Spirit who holds us in the communion of saints, one God, Bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, join together in Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Love.